in our group is of course our um, super bright and napaka napakaklaro talaga niyang mag-discuss no so to continue his uh, lecture let us have once again sir patrick tehedon sir patrick hello po thank you sir jerry patrick, yeah, yeah. okay thank you po sir jerry okay so let us proceed na po dito sa ating uh, lecture on analyze ano na analyze stage papapansin niyo nasa step 5 pa lang tayo first ano pa lang siya first step pa lang sa analyze baka mapansin niyo 140 na mas madali na po yung mga susunod kasi ang pinaka critical po talaga sa paggawa ng CI uh, CI project ay pag-identify ng problem saka yung paggagawa ng solution so pag kayo masyadong kabahan mas maikli po yung mga susunod ko na mga slides so Gaya nga po na nabanggit ko kanina bago mag-present si Ma'am Ternate, ito po yung mga common mistakes po na nangyayari kapag nagko-conduct po tayo o nagagawa tayo ng root cause analysis. Yung first po is missing link between causes. Second is focusing on the who, not on the why. Ito yung na-mention natin kanina. Third is causes identified are not non-standard occurrence. Number four, causes are disguised as solutions. Yun nga yun, yung kanina yung paggamit natin ng mga terms na lack. Number five, bias in identification of the causes. Minsan, ito hindi may iiwasan to eh, kasi di ba lima lang kayo sa group. Minsan, nagkakaroon din ng bias sa pag-identify ng cause ng problem kasi may common kayo na parang ito yung nakikita nyo. Kaya dapat mas holistic, holistic yung approach kapag nagkakaroon ng root cause analysis. And sixth one is causes that begin with no non lack of or discourage. Yun nga yung kanina. So, explain natin ang mas malinaw, ano? Common mistake number one. So, missing link between causes. Uh, ang problem dito, students are unable to correctly follow test instructions. Ito yung sample natin. Why? Test, instru test instructions are long. So, ano pong mali dito? Mukhang tama naman, ano? Kasi parang sinasabi niya, ang problem dito daw, nasunod yung instruction halimbawa sa isang exam, ang ina-identify niyang root cause dito, masyado daw mahaba yung test instruction. Ang mali po dito kasi parang nagkakaroon tayo ng missing link between the occurrence ng dalawang causes. Hindi niya na, di na directly na-explain yung occurrence of the problem that immediately precedes it. Ibig sabihin po, dito sa sample natin, baka mas tama po na ang reason why students did not correctly follow the test instructions is because they do not understand the instructions. Hindi necessarily na dahil mahaba yung instruction. So ganun po minsan, medyo napapatalon tayo doon sa sa pag-identify ng root cause. Kumbaga, dapat sa susunod pa na level ng root cause analysis yun, sa third why pa, minsan na isisingit ang agad natin. Another sample po, nung nag to kanina, may nag-cite daw na isang reason kaya daw hindi nakakapag-submit on time ay dahil uh, poor internet connectivity. Yun yung nailagay ka agad na sa first why niya. Parang tumalo na kaagad tayo. Masyado siyang ano, masyado siyang merong missing link between the two causes. Parang hindi naman directly may co-correlate mo na kaya hindi ka nakapagpasa kasi poor yung internet connection. Baka meron kang na-miss out na root cause na dapat nag-fall muna in between those two. So yun po yung first common mistake. Second po, focusing on the who not on the why. So as mentioned earlier po, a good why why analysis is one where the identified causes are system based rather than individual based. Kasi po yung proseso po yung tinitingnan natin dito, hindi yung tao yung hindi yung tao na gumagawa ng proseso. So it is not mainly about who committed the mistake or who is responsible for the mistake, but rather why did the mistake happen? Bakit ito nangyari? So we need to identify what are the underlying um what are the underlying processes or processes that caused the mistake to happen. So sample po dito, students are unable to correctly follow test instructions. Why? Students do not understand the instructions. Root cause, ang lagay niya dito ay teachers are incompetent in giving instructions to students. So ito po mali kasi nagpupuko siya sa tao, hindi po doon sa, sa proseso mismo. Third common mistake po na usual na nangyayari, Uh, causes identified are non-standard occurrence. Pro sample problem, preparation of projector in class take more than 10 minutes. Ang in-identify niyang reason why, brownout. 
Kaya daw hindi nangyari yon. Eh, yung pag, nagpagkakaroon naman ng brownout, hindi naman siya madalas nangyayari eh. Ano siya eh, parang, parang sinabi natin na kay, yung sa sample ulit natin na pagpapasa ng report, kung online man yon halimbawa, parang ilinagay mo kagad na rutos eh, naputulan ng kuryente. Hindi po, kasi hindi naman standard occurrence yung nangyayari. Kung hindi siya standard occurrence, hindi po siya pwedeng isight as root cause kasi hindi naman siya laging nangyayari. Fourth common mistake po, yun nga nabanggit ko kanina, causes that are disguised as solution. So, sample problem, giving of instructions. Giving of instructions for group activities take more than 10 minutes. Bakit daw po yun nangyayari? Instructions of teachers are unclear for students. Root cause daw after that ay lack of training for teachers in giving instructions. Ano ibig sabihin ng disguise a solution? Pag sinabi mo kasing lack of training, ang kabaligtaran niya, ang solution mo, mag-provide ng training. Yun po yung iiwasan natin na pag i-state ng root cause analysis. No? Kasi sinasuggest na kaagad niya na ang solution is providing training for the teachers on giving instructions. Ang tanong, will the training solve the problem? Not, uh, not necessarily true. Kasi hindi natin na-identify talaga ano ba yung reason bakit hindi naintindihan ng instruct ah, hindi naintindihan ng students yung instructions ng teacher. Posible na mayroon pang iba doon sa sistema. So iwasan po natin yung gano'n na mga pag-state ng root cause. Yung nag-disguise sa solution. Common mistake number five, bias on identifying or bias in identification of the causes. So, dito kasi, nag-a-assume ka na ng root cause between conducting the analysis. Naalala niyo yung sample ko kanina, yung sabi ko, merong common problem na na-encounter sa DO. Halimbawa yung, hindi nag students are unable to submit their, ano ba, ang tawag niya daw sa pinapasa ng students ngayon, Sir Jerry, ikaw nakakausapin ko ha? yung pinapasa ng students na output ngayong naka-module sila yung mga activity sheets ba yung pinapasa ko oh, worksheets po worksheets. Oh, yung worksheets oh sabihin natin ang problem natin na inidentify eh. students were unable to submit worksheets on time or yung yung problem minsan nag yung sample ko kanina nag-jump tayo na conclusion kasi ano tamad yung student di ba yun yung in-example ko kanina yun yung nagiging bias natin kasi siguro yun yung common na na-encounter natin without actually taking a closer look doon sa naging situation ng specific learner na yun. Baka naman kasi, uh, nasanay lang tayo natamad yung bata na ganun yung reason natin. Pala naman, may ibang condition pa. So, yun po, i-avoid natin yung bias. We need to look deeper doon sa problem. Why it occurred. Common mistake number six, causes that begin with no, none, lack of. So, yun po, isa pa natin iiwasan. Nabanggit ko nga kanina doon sa sample ni na Ma'am Satar natin. Number 6 na nga ba tayo, sir? Teka. Ayan, number 6 nga. So, number 6. Causes that begin with no, none, and lack of. Um, dito sa sample na naka-project po sa screen nyo, ang nakalagay po, problem giving of instructions for group activities take more than 10 minutes. Why teachers write the instructions on the board? Root cause daw, no visual aids. Bakit natin i-avoid yung paggamit ng no visual aid? Kasi yung, pag yung mga root cause na in-identify mo na nagbibigyan sa ganyan mga words na no, non, lack of, uh, ano kagad siya eh, parang pinuputulo na kagad yung root cause. Kasi ano na, may solution pa na kagad eh, kailangan magkaroon ng visual aid, parang ganon. So hindi mo siya mas napapalalim pa bakit ba hindi na isulat, um, hindi nakapag-provide ng visual aid. Parang abruptly na puputol na kagad yung YY analysis mo. Ayan po. Wait po. May nakabukas na mic. Ayan. Mute. Okay. So okay po. Next na po tayo. So, tano, paano ba natin ma-identify kung yung Dulo ng YY na cost natin, ayun ang pinaka-root cost. Actually, mahirap po talaga to. Depende po to sa, ano, sa cases. Eh. Ang usual po natin, 
ito po, tanongin natin yung three questions na to para masabi natin kung yun na talaga yung pinaka root cause. First question, would the focus problem statement have happened if this cause is absent? If ang sagot po natin is no, root cause na po yun. Another, if will the focus problem statement recur as a result of the same cause even if the cause has been corrected or dissolved? If no, root cause na po yun. Ano yung sabihin po nun? Uulit pa daw ba yung problema kapag na correct mo na yung na-identify mo na cause? Pag hindi na po uulit yun, once masolve mo na yun, yung sabihin, yun na po yung root cause. Ibig sabihin, correctly mo na-identify yung root cause. Third question, will solving the cause lead to similar focus problems or events? If no, it is a root cause. For the three questions po, if yes ang sagot nyo, meron pa po mas malalim or underlying cause. So usually dyan po tayo tumitigil sa pagtatanong or sa pag-identify uh, na root cause. Ibig sabihin, yun na yung pinaka-root cause ng problem. So ano-ano pa ba yung ibang checkpoints to determine kung yun na talaga yung root cause? If there is a logical dead end or multiple broad causes, when you dig deeper? When the cause is dissolved or addressed, when there is a logical sense that the problem will be corrected, reduced, or prevented, it can be influenced and controlled by the team. Everyone agrees and clearly sees how the cause can help solve problem. Isa pa po palang terminal, ano natin, hindi na tayo magtatanong ng why kapag na-identify na natin yung ganito cause. Kapag hindi na, beyond our control na yung susunod sa kanya. Sample po ng beyond our control na root cause. Halimbawa, after 3YY nyo, lumabas na nga yung, option, yung cause na uh, poor internet connection. Kapag sinol o kaya ay ano, halim, mas maganda siguro ano, uh, poor internet signal in location. Halimbawa, yun na yung na-identify mong cause. Eh kahit naman isolve mo yung poor internet connection, wala, uh, hindi mo pala kayang isolve, sorry. Hindi mo pala kayang isolve yung ganong problema kasi beyond your control, titigil ka na rin po doon. So yun po yung mga checkpoints natin sa root cause analysis. Okay po. So that sums up po yung ating step 5 sa root cause analysis. So we will now proceed po sa next step po, step 6. Yung developing solutions.